With most of the country already under extreme measures, it's clear that we need to do more together. In England, we must therefore go into a national lockdown which is tough enough to contain this variant. That means the government is once again instructing you to stay at home. You may only leave home for limited reasons permitted in law, such as to shop for essentials, to work if you absolutely cannot work from home, to exercise, to seek medical assistance, such as getting a COVID test, or to escape domestic abuse. Primary schools, secondary schools, and colleges across England must move to remote permit provision from tomorrow. If you're from the UK, you will have most definitely seen that video of Boris Johnson announcing a third lockdown on the 4th of January 2021. With no announcements made in regards to universities in the broadcast, a lot of university students took to Twitter to complain about a number of things, from fees to their accommodations to the methods that they're actually being taught with. This situation inspired me to interview some current students and to get their voices and opinions heard and to shed light on how their education has been affected due to the pandemic. So hello James. Hello. What course are you studying and what year are you in? I'm currently my second year studying okay. football journalism at the University of Derby. I know you did first year but are you paying for or staying in accommodation this year or are you staying at home? Yeah so I'm privately renting a house in Derby mm -hmm. with a couple of mates so I'm staying there for the year. Obviously not right now because it doesn't make any sense yeah. living there but yeah um I lived there for the first half of the year anyway. Yeah. I'll probably go back as well. Are they, have they said anything about like the rent or anything? Or are you still not really. It? Yeah, we're still having to pay it. If anything, they've been quite pushy to get us to sign for next year as well, which I think is a bit, is a bit not out of order, but it's a bit it's a bit weird, yeah. So the one the, the main guy who we live with that sorts it all out is, is talking to him to just tell him to mm -hmm. back off a little bit while we assess our options because none of us are sure whether we're going to move in next year or not we're just playing it by ear I was going to say the problem I've got is I like I enjoy living in that house so much that it's it's a viable option but then mm. financially if you don't need if you don't need to live there financially it, it, it's whether the financial burden outweighs the sort of enjoyment you get from living there yeah. sort of thing if That's, that makes sense I can imagine if you were like living there on your own you'd be like yeah. yeah no way do you feel positively about your living situation and uni at the moment like doing it from home obviously I, I, I only live half an hour away from uni anyway so it's not like I'm miles away so I could realistically go back whenever I want and obviously got a, a good life back at home obviously with my parents so that they're always welcoming and they're not they're not pushing me back at all so mm. yeah I'm, obviously I've got I've got all my all my work done now until the semester starts again so uni wise and like living situation wise obviously I'm pretty happy with it Ex excited to move back in because obviously I'm living with two of my best mates so it's always going to be a good time but yeah just like I said earlier just playing it by ear so you said you'd been at uni pretty much for the first part um how had they been teaching it from the start were they doing some remote and some not like how did the restrictions affect that? Yeah, so most of it was remote learning, so it was all online. We had one lecture every two weeks that was in university, and even then it was like a quarter of the size in terms of classes, so they'd spread that one lecture across four different lectures to get everyone in. You couldn't really sit near anyone or anything, so it wasn't really an enjoyable experience because you couldn't talk to anyone or anything like that. Yeah. You just had to sit and listen and, and then go. You weren't even allowed to sort of talk to anyone as you left the, the classroom. So that was a bit, bit enough. It's not the same as what you'd already experienced, which is like, I think if it no. had always been like that, you wouldn't miss it. But like people want to go to yeah. uni for the social aspect, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Especially when you you spent all of last year making friends in your course and everything, and now you've just got to sit and look at them and not speak to them. <laughs> just like wait at them across the room. <laughs> It's sort of, it's in a weird way, it's hard to maintain that friendship as well when you can't have contact with yeah. them because obviously you you bond over conversations, don't you? Obviously, in my course, it's orientated around football, so everyone loves football. So that's just that's all you talk about with anyone. So yeah. 
and when that's removed it's hard to sort of stay socially active with everyone and you seem to sort of lose a lot of friendships as well so that's a bit of a negative side of it as well can't imagine <laughs> that's making you feel too great about being in lockdown again either what are your opinions on how you've been taught you're being taught at the moment oh you asked sort of how i've been taught okay. opinions on it well it's it's not ideal for me because i'm very much a someone who needs it explaining to in a certain way so like i'm 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 good at learning when someone says it in a certain way, which obviously when you're in person, you can ask them separately to to explain it a different way, and then I clock on. But with remote learning, you don't feel like you're actually in the same sort of space as, as your lecturer. It feels like you're just watching a DVD sort of thing. You're just watching them press through a PowerPoint, and you're you have to do everything on your own. You can't even well unless you send a message to the to the chat thing and assuming they see it. But it's it's just it's just not the same. You don't have that same back and forth dialogue, which for me personally, I, I appear to thrive on. So yeah. obviously, it's it's not it's it's what they have to do. You can't have everyone in the same room. It's just not feasible. But mm. so I, 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 I don't think they could do anything better. But obviously, for me personally, it's not the ideal scenario. I think um, that was partly how I felt last year because obviously we got put into lockdown right before we hit like the final bit of my third year so I didn't miss out on too many lectures but the ones that we did had they didn't even at that point have zoom or anything set up it was just they uploaded like a powerpoint basically and that was it and it was like I'm not learning anything and then if you emailed the teachers a lot of them were like because of covid I'm not really responding to any emails to be fair, my lecturers have been really good like that. Obviously, it might take them a few days to respond, but they're always really helpful. So I don't I think I've got quite lucky in that sense because speaking to a lot of other people, the, the lecturers are a bit too mm. up their own backside, really. They're, they're thinking, right, this is just a bit of time off now. Yeah. I can do what I want. So luckily, I've had some really good lecturers that have been really helpful. So, cool. yeah, got got lucky in that sense. Do you personally believe that the education you're receiving is worth it? I know obviously things are different. Do you think some people have been saying they should lower the cost because it's all online? Like, what do you think about that? <laughs> um, well, I mean, with, with my course anyway, my personal belief is even if we were having in-person lectures, it's still not worth 10 grand a year. But um, you, you can't justify, because we we got to explain this, you can't really justify them lowering the costs that much because the universities don't actually see that money it goes straight to the government mm. obviously that it's whether it's used for universities or not that that money gets used for something so i don't think i don't think you could really blame the universities for keeping the prices the same i think you'd have to go straight to the straight to the government to ask them to change it but yeah i think i don't i think unless you're doing a very very specialist course which you're going to get make a lot of money out of the career i don't think you could really justify spending 10 grand a year on it obviously mm. you're not going to ever see not going to ever see that money or it's not going to make a difference to your life ever we're explaining that in detail but i still don't think it's it's justifiable especially in my in my course where you know one in a hundred will go on to make over a hundred grand a year sort of thing yeah. the thing is as well i could with with online learning as well I, I could be paying 10 grand to be getting online lectures and i could have a mate sat next to me who's not even doing the course taking all the notes down he'd know exactly all exactly the same as what i'd know if not more and he wouldn't have paid a penny for it so yeah. i think paying 10 grand to read powerpoint slides is a little bit unfair but again it goes back to the point of i don't i don't see what else they could do obviously money is very tight at the minute with everyone isn't it yeah. so i don't i wouldn't expect the government to lower it because they're going to need every penny they can get by the sound of it how would you like to see things change for you and the students apart from obviously pandemic going away <laughs> But like money wise and like all of that, what do you think? Um, I think if if you if you're getting sort of if you're renting accommodation from university, my university were pretty good last year and that I didn't have to pay my last sort of trimester of uh of rent. They they just like they we paid it initially and then they refunded everyone, mm -hmm. which was good. I think that that should be more universal across England or across the UK. But um I think obviously I'm quite an exception with my lecturers because they're really good. You reach out to them and they'll help you. But by the sounds of it, it just 
seems like even if it's not academic help i think there should be more to, more done to reach out to people especially vulnerable people because who are going to be struggling mentally because so especially if, if you're in first year it's a whole new scenario you're stuck in a little box room uh, 24 hours a day i think more needs to be done to reach out to these people because yeah. other, otherwise we are gonna we're gonna see a new pandemic of you know people hurting themselves aren't we yeah I've seen a load of stuff about um, how ambulances keep getting called to uni accommodations because people are like either wanting to take their lives or people are wanting to hurt themselves because they're just so isolated and they can't go anywhere, which is terrible. Yeah, but well, uh, apart from that, I don't think they could do much different. Obviously, you'd, you'd have to, universities themselves couldn't. You'd have to go a step further up to the government to make any sort of real change because you know, universities are just like everyone else. They're, they're, they are a business at the end of the day, aren't they? As much as they're an education system, they've, they've got to earn money and they've got to pay their staff and everything. So you can understand them financially not making any changes. So that's another thing. It'd be nice for the government to acknowledge that uni students exist. They're obviously... There's all this talk about when school children are going back and, and when nurseries are going back and everything, but the only people who are actually paying for their education are left completely in the dark. So that's a bit a bit rubbish on that behalf. So we just, just want to feel acknowledged more than anything by the government because at the minute it just seems like we don't exist. The government were very quick to jump and point the finger at students for the spread of it, but then as soon as it comes to helping them out, it's all gone a bit quiet. So that's definitely a frustrating thing. But that would be the main thing to help, whether it's financial or, or whatever. I think the main thing would just be a bit of recognition and a bit of support more than anything. I think that would go a lot further with some people than, you know, not having to pay a couple of months rent. I think that's the reason people were so mad as well, because they're not getting acknowledged and then they're being blamed for things getting worse even though they've been told they can safely return to accommodations and now they're paying money for something that they don't even know if they're going to be able to go back to yeah yeah exactly well thank you for your your insight it has been that's all right this is meg Say hello, Meg. Hello. <laughs> it's like I'm a streamer. What course are you studying and what year are you in at the moment? Uh, I'm in my first year and I'm studying mental health nursing. Are you paying for or staying in accommodation or are you at home? I'm privately renting. Mm. Um, so I'm not in halls, but I am in that in the city. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Have they said anything about you paying for it? Obviously, because you're happy because you're living in private. Because I'm guessing yours is separate to the university stuff anyway. Yeah, uh, so they haven't said anything about um, mine, like my landlords, but I would. I just kind of live here 24-7 now. Um, but I know that the uni I'm at has frozen rent for people that, yeah, and they've been quite good. They, they've done a lot of like nice things like that and that's one of them so i think if you're if you're living at home um then you don't have to pay for your hall's accommodation that's really good that is really good yeah i think it's rare i don't think many unis have done it <laughs> what do you think about like your living situation at the moment in relation to uni like is it working for you or is it not <laughs> um <laughs> I'd say yeah it's it's okay it's like basically being at home except I'm not with my parents because I'm just with my partner um so yeah it's quite chill I think it's better I'm very glad I'm not in halls mm. no to be fair like when you said that I know a lot of nursing students usually don't live in halls anyway I mm. when we were having tours and stuff in first year they took us around where the nursing places are and they were just like houses <laughs> And they were like, most nursing students... Yeah, they asked to meet us. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh, nursing students... Um, they, how they worded it was, nursing students don't go out very much. So they were to live in the houses. I was like, I don't think... Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're like, put you all together so that when you're in placement, all the other students don't uh, keep you up with parties. That's the idea. <laughs> Since the year started, I know obviously nursing students are a bit different 
But have you done any remote stuff? Or... Everything we've done so far has been online. Um, and then starting next month, we'll be going in for like clinical skills and stuff. Um, but all of our theories, I've just been at home. Yeah. How has that been? Like, is it like Zoom calls, basically? Just... Yeah, it's like... Yeah, basically the same, the same thing. Um, it's it's okay. I think it's a lot harder to concentrate because you can just distract yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like there's nothing to stop you from. <laughs> yeah, I think it is a lot harder, and it's it's a lot more isolating mm. as well. Um, yeah, when you're just sat there and like I don't really know anybody that does my course. I've not met anybody. It's just a bit strange. How are you feeling about how you're being taught at the moment, and what are your opinions on? I think I understand why they've done it because I think especially now it's just not safe at all um so it wouldn't be worth it and as well with nursing you have to maintain a level of like a standard to be qualified at the end so they can't drop the standard so like we're getting taught all the same things whereas I imagine on some other courses the standard's gone right down. <laughs> yeah. Although it's online you sound like you're actually getting taught what you should be getting yeah yeah I think I am and I'm I'm not sure like because it's my first year I'm not actually sure what I'm missing as much as other people so I wonder if second year nursing students are like this is like shit <laughs> but I, like, I don't really know so <laughs> do you believe like the education you're receiving is worth it because a lot of people have been like oh we're being taught everything online I might as well just like read powerpoints and stuff you're obviously getting actual lectures and stuff it seems yeah I think yeah like I was saying that obviously it has to meet that standard so I would say it is worth it for my course but well I don't think that you should have to pay to do a nursing degree at all but that's a government issue not a, <laughs> not a university issue um but yeah I would I wouldn't be best yeah so I'm not best pleased I have to pay but mm. <laughs> I wouldn't be if um if I was doing another course as well, I think I would be quite mugged off because it's not the same experience. And, and like, we haven't got access to all the facilities really that we need, which is unfortunate. We do, the, they did bring back like a nursing bursary, but it was like, it used to be free. And now they're trying to mug us off with this shitty like <laughs> bursary and nothing else. And we're like, it's not the same. <laughs> How would you like to see things change for yourself and other students? Like, obviously, things are a bit difficult because of the pandemic but is there anything that you would like to see change i think the main thing is just like a bit more communication um but again i do blame the government for that because they obviously it's like they they really don't count uni students as somebody to be taken into consideration um and then so then i don't feel like the faculty know um what's going on so then we don't know what's going on and it's just it's just not helpful <laughs> yeah and i think if, if you've got an education section of your little briefing just add in the university students as well because we do exist Literally, even if it's just university students are advised to stay in their permanent homes for the time yeah because it's like all the stuff that happened in manchester how uni students moved in and then they were basically put into lockdown in their accommodations and they weren't allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> they were like going crazy. It's partly because the government had been really, really unclear about uni accommodations and what uni students should do. And then universities got yeah. all, like slack for it. Yeah, it is hard. But I think, I know that some universities have handled things spectacularly shit as well. So like... It definitely depends. Like, I don't think Manchester University needed to imprison their students. I don't think that was <laughs> necessary. <laughs> that was a, a too far, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> a bit much. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you go if you have places to be. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. bye. Hi. What course are you doing and what year of study are you currently in? Uh, so I'm in my final year and I do English literature and creative writing. Are you paying 
for accommodation or are you currently staying at home at the moment? Um, I mean, I'm stuck at home at the minute with the, the fun rules, but um, I pay for on-campus accommodation. What are you thinking about that at the moment? Is it a positive experience or a yeah. refunded anything? Or? Well, we've had an email about like a rebate um, because people at my uni have done this thing like a, a rent strike. They, they sent off a list of demands about like the with the last semester, you know, where we had to like do that staggered return thing. Yeah that we should have a refund for that because obviously we usually have to stay there for it, whatever. And they wanted a refund for the time like now where we can't go. Uh, the university have offered a rebate for now, or they've said a rebate where like, just don't pay anything until Friday because I think like the deadline at some point this week will be like, we'll send out some more info, but we're going to give you a rebate for this. And everyone's like, well, that's not really what we want because people want the ability to like have that refund for the time before. And know know whether or not we could cancel it if it's going to be that we're all stuck at home from now on or what they just they're being real cagey things aren't exactly looking positive for people being able to return anywhere anyway like yeah i mean i kind of feel lucky that i am on campus because at least there's a bit more sort of solidarity whereas if i was living off campus like some people i know they're kind of stuffed they can't really do anything about it um, but then again, I also feel for people who have had to go back to campus, like they sent out an email, you know, to everyone about those people. Apparently they have to get tested like every three to four days while they're on campus. I know they have the facilities, but it seems a bit excessive three to four days, as well as like when you returned, you had to do two tests. Like, yeah. everywhere is closed and no one's anywhere. What are they doing? At least uh, being safer than some places yeah, at least at least they're putting in effort like i will say that for my uni they've definitely put in effort they had um as well as like campus security team they had like a covid campus security team that would like no they, they would like go around and like break up parties literally they, they would go around and check for any parties or and like i definitely heard about some people like losing their on-campus accommodation because they were caught breaking the rules how have you been being taught generally since this academic year started and like how's COVID affected it? Obviously you're at home, so. Yeah, um, uh, well, when, when I was on campus, what they did was they basically had, um, so one of my classes was completely online. My creative writing class was all online. It was like every two weeks we'd have an online class. Um, all of my other classes, it was like one week it was all online work and the other week it was all like in person. Mm. I hated the in-person class, hated them. Because with the masks on, with the distance, and especially, um, I did a crime in neoconservative America, like media class mm -hmm. thing, and we were in like a lecture hall, and it was busy-ish, you know, like there were people in all of the spaced out seats. You could never hear a single thing that people were saying. Like people, you, you know, you'd be yeah. sat like you distance apart, and I, I was like trying to lean forward and like listen. You can't even try, you, you know, even if I could live, read, like, I, I just can't. Like, I already need subtitles in real life normally. Like, <laughs> it was even worse. So I could never process what I, anything was, what was going on, anything. The online classes, if they were actually, you know, a video camera thing and yeah. interaction, I loved them because I could actually, you know, I didn't have to go anywhere. So if I woke up, like, two seconds before, yeah. perfect. The teachers always checked that like you were actually interacting they did a lot of like small group work so that you got to know the people in your class still because you could still like talk to them like one to four we had groups of in some of them what i didn't like is when the online work consisted of just like okay this is the work for this week do it oh yeah like there was no no virtual thing at all so it was just the in person and then here's some assignments i would forget like i need like <laughs> hey i've got a class now yeah, I have, a, I have a memory of a, of a goldfish that's been like head against the, the thing, you know, like I have no idea what's ever going on and no matter how many notes I take, I will forget it. Yeah. So I need I needed those classes to be more interactive and they just weren't. I feel like it's definitely been like a case by case basis. Yeah. Like my creative writing class was so much better because even though there was more of us than usual, like it was a lot more, it was easy to hear what people were saying. Yeah. It was a lot easier to just like t track people's comments because like if they didn't get a chance to put their hand up or 
you know, they're too shy, like a lot, like myself, I have like anxiety and other people in the class aren't necessarily comfortable with speaking. Um, so if they want to help, they can just type it in the margins and that's, that's so much easier. And then I get feedback from everybody who might not, you know, have spoken up in class. Yeah, that's true. So you genuinely feel quite positively about how you've been taught mostly at the moment then? I mean, yes and no. Like, obviously, um, next semester is going to be, whenever that actually starts, it's going to be with completely different teachers. And, like, for my creative writing class now, we now don't have, like, any workshops virtually. Those are only now for one semester. Mm. And normally we'd have to, like, set up meetings with the tutor, but now that's going to be, like, on us to sort of set up some sort of virtual meeting as opposed to we could just normally, you know, walk, waltz onto campus, drop in and say... <laughs> Hey, what's up? You know, like, and then with the next set of classes that we're going to get, I, um, I'm concerned because I can't go to the library and get the set of books that I need because I've been sent a very long list of expensive things that I need for English. Usually I just get them from the library mm. or, you know, there used to be an on-campus bookstore which would, like, sell them in a bundle and you get them cheaper because of COVID, it couldn't keep going anymore. They closed it while I was abroad last year. <laughs> because of COVID, they couldn't afford to keep running. Oh. So now a lot of people are kind of stuffed because they don't we can't afford to get them. No. no. Do they I mean, last like semester... online alternative to it? No, they don't really... They have an online uh, library for articles, but for, like, textbooks, there's, there's pretty much nothing. It was really good last semester because they sent us all of our things, like, for both my English and my media electives. They sent us links to anything we needed to watch they sent us like pdfs this time they're saying yeah you've got to buy them oh, sorry i don't get that because nope. if they can't even afford to keep something open they should know that at the moment it's not exactly going to be easy for students to be able to buy yeah like literally they used to do a whole thing where they'd like have a table with all of the where it'd like label the module and say right these are all the books that you need they're all the right editions because uh, I don't know, well, you'll know, with English, they get very picky about it being the right one. Yeah. So I'm you know, forever scared that I'm going to get the wrong one, put a page in, and it'd be the complete wrong thing, and get my essay just tossed in the bin. Do you personally believe that education that you're currently receiving is worth it? Like, no. the amount you pay? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, like, um, even my parents, parents have said, are they not going to reduce anything? And I was like, no, because they're like, we're supporting you virtually. But they're not. They're not at all, like, um, people have been applying for the no detriment policy, which I assume you've heard about, and there was, like, a huge argument started in, like, the Facebook group for my uni where, where they were, where there was people who were somehow students saying how lazy and ungrateful those people were who wanted it, but, like, come on, you've known that we've had this work for this whole time and you haven't done it, oh, you're just lazy and you're taking advantage of, like, the ECs, yeah, it was... And I wanted to be just like, you know, we're literally living in like some form of dystopia here. Like there's a whole pandemic going on. You think we're going to worry about an essay? No, I'm worried about people that are dying. Like it's not just because you're stuck in your house with nothing to do doesn't mean that people haven't lost family and friends or, you know, that are, have mental illness and are like terrified of the outside world or anything. They're like, well, that's a valid. We were just like, everybody is in the same boat just because everything is easy for you and you're not stressed doesn't mean that everybody else is and also why would you complain about that because it will make you look better i don't think a lot of times that people consider that like online learning isn't necessarily accessible to everybody no. or you know people don't consider what if people don't have internet in their house or their house isn't safe yeah. or they literally don't have a room so like it's just people only think of themselves sometimes and i think that's Although the pandemic has sometimes brought out the best in people, it's also definitely brought out the worst. And there are a lot of people that genuinely need help right now, and I just hate it that people think that because they're fine, everybody else is in the exact same boat doing dandy. How would you like um, things to change then for yourself and for other students? What would you like to see happen? Um, I'd kind of like them to decide what they're doing. Like, a lot of the times people have said, oh, you know, we need online. Online is much safer and everything but then people have been like oh it's not this in person is what we need it's this 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 and this but like surely people have got to admit that in person now is just not the same like for people who are, might be deaf or hard of hearing like i 
I have not seen a single lecturer or teacher wear one of those like masks that are good for like lip readers or anything like that, which I guess, you know, if someone is deaf or hard of hearing, they might have some support. But that's also not always the case, you know? There are some systems like online that can come with those like auto caption things. Yeah. Um, I just feel like they need to pick like, one or the other and focus in on it so then they can actually give full priority and support to that thing instead of want- trying to do both and then neither yeah. really working out. I think the main reason they did like the half and half is because they wanted students to come to campus. But like, there's just no point. There's no point being on campus when you can't use anything there. There's nothing there. All the stores in the area are closed. The, you know, the bus services are so reduced and my uni's basically in the middle of nowhere. As soon as it was becoming an issue, like, back in March, they sent people home, and that was it. But we've got more deaths and cases now than we did back then. But they just they just want the money that they lost out last time. I feel like the, the government doesn't give enough consideration to uni. Like, they were so much of an afterthought in, like, the last announcement. Uh, like, I saw a post going out where it was just, like, dry January, take a shot every time they mention university. Kind of thing. Like, because they just didn't. And my dad was the one that told me. Because even though I, like you know, read the summary of all the things that have been said. Yeah. But he was the one that found out that universities have been closing until then because it's so low down on a list of things that they can be bothered to say. They'll just chuck it out and say, eh, may as well let the university stay closed. It doesn't make sense to me because, like, in all of our classes, we have to wear masks, we have to be distant. Everyone, you know, a lot of the time it's online and you're barely in all the time. Sure, you do have to move into a permanent, and I do think that is, you know, a big risk and everything. But then you look at how, like, primaries and secondaries are being taught when they're in person. There's no, there's not really distancing. They don't have to wear masks when they're that young. So, surely that's more, just because they're not as as big a risk, they can still transmit it to the teachers, the teachers between each other. Thank you very much for being part of my interview. No worries. I'm glad I could be a part of it. It's all right. Bye. Bye. Thank you to all my interviewees who took part. It was very interesting to hear everyone's perspectives on the current situation. As of the moment, it doesn't look like anything is being looked at. At least there's been no announcements or anything about universities and accommodations, apart from people hearing from their individual and respective accommodation. Links to petitions will be down below for if anyone wants to take action for anything. And there will also be links to the interviewees' social medias and things like that down below. My information will also be in the description. I post every Fridays now, so... Keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.